This is a breakdown of every research project ever. Now, I have been on a number of different research projects, big, small, large, with industry partners, with university collaborators, with government funding, the lot. And one thing I found is that they all follow the same sort of process and progress. There's certain moments in each project that vice uh, documentary series has really, really hit on. And I wanna share with you what is really going on under the surface in these professors' minds. Now, I'm talking about a Vice series called The Shortlist, and it's about short documentaries and films. And this one is called Weaponizing the Weather, The Race to Make Clouds. And it follows a professor who gets a grant application, a successful grant application through with an industrial and government sort of uh, funding progress program and then it follows the progress through the entire project. Now this gave me a little bit of PTSD because it really is the perfect kind of summary of every research program I've ever been involved in and likely you'll ever be involved in too. Here it is. I'm going to give you an insider behind the scenes look at what is really going on in this professor's mind. So first of all we start with the grant Funding phase. This is where a professor, a researcher, a principal investigator, whatever you want to call them, they have to sort of tread a very fine line, a balance between not overstating their research, but also being confident enough in what they're able to achieve and exciting enough in what they're able to achieve that they're kind of lying and not lying. The important thing here is to separate people, the government, industry bodies, whoever it is, from their money. And this is the most kind of uh, damaging, I think, stage of any research project because a single word, a single sentence that is too boisterous, too overarching, too sort of uh, ambitious will destroy the project from the get-go. Because remember, you can't lie, but you can bend the truth a little bit. Our project is called the Optimization of Aerosol Seeding in Rain Enhancement Strategies, or OASIS. We know for sure we can deliver this data set that is quite unique. If you can get a sentence like that, a unique data set, that is broad enough, tick, and also narrow enough, tick, and leaves you open for interpretation. So at the end of the project, you can be like, look, this is quite unique. Is three years long enough for these proposals? I wouldn't propose to do it if I didn't believe that it's doable. But I mean, again, I would never propose science that didn't have any risks. I think that's boring. All right, so in this part, they're obviously sort of like speaking to people who are funding the project, or they're at least their representatives, their scientific representatives. And, uh, you know, here they probably hit on something that, uh, is quite common where it seems too ambitious, but you have to talk about ambitious things as a scientist, otherwise they don't get funded. And what's happening here is that the professor is trying their best to balance the uh, achievability of the research project, but without overreaching. And maybe here, there's a small glimmer that this project is gonna be difficult and maybe not reach its goals because they're already a little bit nervous about whether it's achievable. It's a tough balance, this grant sort of like uh, application stage. The next stage in the project is acceptance. Everyone is super excited and happy. Acceptance of a grant is probably the most valuable part of a research project for a person's career and the career and the uh, prestige of the university. That is all they really, really care about is getting the money and getting the grant because this is where all of the PR stuff comes in. This is where everyone's excited. Not only are the, um, are the uh, scientists excited, but also the university and the grant funders and every Everyone are excited because it's the beginning. Nothing's been done yet. Remember, all these people have promised the world. Now they have to deliver. We can see here, this is where the um, researchers have all come together and this is their opportunity for as many photos as possible to make the project look as awesome as possible for everyone. Everyone benefits from this sort of PR. So if you're at this stage in the um, application process and you've been accepted or your grant's been accepted, ham it up, get a little bit of that chest beating going because it only goes downhill from here. After all the hoo-ha and the PR stunts, 
Now it's time for the actual science to be done, which in fairness is what we're all there for, but it's only just begun. Excitement is high and uh, now it's about work, it's about project meetings, it's about all of the boring stuff that actually, you know, gets the job done, but no one is particularly interested in that until there's group meetings, until there's paperwork to be filled out. This is where the scientists who have got the grants are probably, you know, the excitement peaks initially and then it dies down very quickly. And that's where they're looking for other grants because, you know, this is about getting as much uh, money and kudos as possible. This is the academic game. And so, you know, yes, you've got one. And the question is from the university, well, what's next? You haven't even finished the project. You haven't even started the project that you've just got, but they're always wondering what next. And that is the pressure of academia. So here we are, here's a typical kind of uh, update. Now this one's really flash and fancy. There's clearly a lot of money going on here and they wanna make it seem as awesome as possible because it's in the United Arab Emirates. But uh, ultimately, yeah, this is the sort of stuff that we see. We sit down, we talk, we sort of like do a PowerPoint presentation. We talk about key performance indicators and milestones. As long as you hit those, everyone's happy. And whether or not you hit them is very, very much dependent on how well you're able to write the grant in the first place. Remember, nice and broad, open to interpretation, but it seems specific enough with the language that you're actually hitting very specific milestones. Good afternoon, everybody. And firstly, I apologize, I can't speak Arabic to you. We are providing a very unique data set. Unique data set, yes. Depending on whose money it is, you'll be asked to do a number of different things. You may be asked to do like a press release. You may be asked to have an interview. In this case, this is a very high profile um, study and research um, sort of project. So here, the thing is, is the scientists aren't trained in sort of like PR in media appearances. So there's a point where you realize that it's less about the science sometimes, and it's more about making the project, the grant funding body, whether that's industry, whether that's uh, government, whether that's what, you know, whatever it is, a scientific sort of institute, whatever it is, it's about making them look as good as possible. And so here, the professor is talking about how they're kind of prompted a little bit on what to say to the press. You know, they're not told what to say, but remember that this is a very expensive project and we want to look as good as possible during the process. So talk about innovation. Here she's talking to a minister or like a, a government representative. And uh, the thing is, is that everyone's got their own outcome. What makes the project successful? As a researcher, the success comes from getting your unique data set. And also the success comes from making your career a little bit better by grabbing loads of money from somewhere and saying, ha ha, I brought in this amount of money. Give me more, whoever you're asking for next. The government sort of side of things, they wanted the, the, um, the country to look good. Here, this is an international collaboration, so Finland has to look as good as possible. Not only do they want to be known for their education, they also want to be known as strong innovators. And so that's really the lens through which this conversation is being held. And then, of course, if you're the funding body, you don't want to make it look like you've been scammed. So you do want to see actual outcomes, something that you can report. And it's all in the marketing. So it is a tough balance. And this happens throughout the entire course of the uh, of the research project. So yeah, it's not just about the science. There's so much more going on. Oh look, there's the little alien you guys are always talking about. Just noticed him. All right, so during this project, right, there are a number of different characters in every project, but uh, there are a few sort of similarities between each project. And here we have the quintessential alpha male of the research project. He's slow speaking, he's been through the, the sort of like cycle of getting these grants, over promising, under delivering for years. He is unfazed. He just knows he needs to say the right number of complicated words in the right order and people essentially leave him to do what he wants. And uh, here we can see him sort of using those expert skills that he's developed over the many years of doing research. See what is going on when we change the system. Mankind made it to the moon. We have a good approach to enhance clouds. 
I love that jumper over his shoulders, just going into the field. He's never, this is a typical professor, never really been in the field, sits in the lab, don't worry, don't get me wrong, I know that that's what they have to do. I'm not having a go at that part, but oh, just going in with his glasses, his nice pristine white shirt, pointing and talking about things. He is living the professor dream. Some presentation over the UAE. You may call it the holy grail you know, of atmospheric research. Oh. The holy grail of atmospheric research. This guy, he's got it sorted. He knows the words to use to get the funding and he's not ashamed to use them. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. The goal is to contribute. All right, so throughout the project, you have to go and talk about your research, obviously, because that's what the funding body wants. This is about showing progress. Also, the, the scientists is, is part of the like scientific and the research process. Here we are, nice load of uh, people in a room looking at a PowerPoint presentation. Mwah, conference in all its glory. And he's an older professor, so don't expect him to actually be any good and uh, exciting to listen to. View to water security through enhancing rainfall in the UAE, but also in other arid and semi-arid regions. To advance the science, technology, and implementation of rain and- There he is, reading off the PowerPoint like a pro. This guy doesn't need fancy presentation skills. He just needs to know how to write grant applications. So here we are, this person knows it. This person knows exactly what's going on. All right, there comes a moment in every research project where panic sets in. You've not been able to deliver what you over-promised at the beginning, and therefore, panic starts to set in in the last six months, maybe up to a year before you're actually meant to finish the project. Remember, you said you're going to deliver a unique data set. Remember that you're going to deliver all of these things. This is where you have to now start really panicking. If you are sort of like doing a research project, the supervisor normally just freaks out at this point and starts getting quite demanding, at least in my experience, that's what happens. Um, and everyone's on sort of like high alert for like, oh my God, we promised all these things and we only did this much. Okay, let's talk to them and see what they actually do want. That's what's happening at this stage of the project. The emulator was a very big part of this project and, and one of the most uh, relevant in terms of AI uh, across all nine projects that we... All right, so here they've obviously promised AI sort of like modeling and they've not been able to deliver it. So uh, this is where panic sets in and uh, yeah, the, you can see in their face that it's, uh, it's gonna be a tough few months to deliver on this stuff. We'd, we'd like to see that progress for that. Alia would also agree with me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh-oh, time to get working. You know, people have given you loads of money. People have given you lots of opportunities. You know, they've given you a little bit of freedom, just go speak at your conferences. But unfortunately, when the money sort of like starts running out, when uh, the time starts running out, people start to panic. And unfortunately, that's when the funding body can get a little bit more pushy on what they actually want. Because, you know, you promised all this stuff in the beginning and it's gone a completely different way maybe to the way you thought. And so now they're like, actually, we want that modeling, that data set thing that you were talking about. Where is it? And finally, the final results day. We've been through the panic and now it's about trying to convince the funding body that you have done everything you could have done possibly to actually deliver on the promises in your grant application that maybe you've overreached a little bit in the early days, but here we go. This is the moment you give the final presentation. This presentation is less about the science and it's more about the marketing of what you've done. Being able to convince someone that you have spent their money wisely in the last three or four years or even one year of the research project actually doing what they want. And uh, you can tell in this bit, this is probably one of the most painful parts for me because clearly they've over promised early on and the professor can even open her eyes when she says we've delivered on everything we said we would in this project and it just pains me to watch because I've been there. I'll now call up Professor Haneli Korhonen to give her presentation on the optimization of aerosol seeding and rain enhancement strategies. All right so we're down to four minutes this is the last part of the presentation. Mwah. This is the money shot. This is where she should finish with a massive sort of like high power statement. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and as a summary, 
Um, I think that uh, we think that, well, we think that we achieve. Oh, no. So uh, maybe we think, uh, uh, and I'm not blaming this professor at all. This is the toughest sell of all time. Let's watch that again. It's really tough. Oh, it's really, really <laughs> tough. Um, and as a summary, um, I think that uh, we think that, well, we think that we achieve what we set out to do. So basically, we wanted to provide a very unique uh, data set. Unique data set. Tie that all together. She knows she's not delivered on what she promised in her grant funding because you do have to lie a little bit in your grant funding to actually be exciting enough for the funder to give you their millions of dollars. And uh, that is what it all comes down to, uh, the final results. And uh, ultimately, every project, even if you haven't delivered, it kind of moves on. People cut their losses. They take what they can from the research and they move on. And uh, you know, that's, that's really what research is about. And here, Vice have captured that just perfectly. Mwah. Well, well, not Vice, the, the, the uh, director of weaponizing the weather. Mm, well done. So there we have it. There's everything that you need to know about a research project. Whether you're a student on it, whether or not you're a professor, whether or not you're applying for your own grant, this is how every single project goes, in my experience, all the time. So let me know in the comments what you think. Have you experienced similar characters, issues with your projects? Let me know. Let's share what actual research is really like, especially when you spend your time begging for money from other people. And uh, remember to go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. And I'll see you in the next video.